thank for stopping by. This is Tom, and this is Tom's Radio Room Show. And what I've got here is my new novelty radio. Now, I say novelty because it's not the best radio in the world, but it does so many things. I just can't, I, I keep forgetting all the things it can do. So I'm going to show it to you. This is the GFX Boombox. Now, when I was growing up, I really liked those boom boxes. Some of them, you know, were big as a truck. I remember one that was like three feet long and two feet high. Had all kinds of flashing lights. It had like a dozen speakers. And you had to be a pretty strong guy to carry that one on your shoulder. So, yeah, I enjoy boom boxes. And this is kind of a modern day replica of a boom box. It's not very big. Um, hmm, I have a ruler someplace. Ah, here we go. It's, um, it's about 14 inches across and about 6 inches high, roughly. And I'm going to basically try to show you, I hate that word basically, but I, I get snagged into using it too. Um, but I just want to show you the overall features. Now, I've been watching this for a while because I saw, oh, this was maybe nine months ago, a YouTube video on it. And it was by my YouTube friend, Gillis, from Canada. And he really liked it. And it does have a shortwave band. Although, <laughs> well, we'll get into that shortwave band in a minute. So let me just kind of quickly go over the features and then I'll show you some of the features. It has a cassette player recorder. It also records. It has a USB and a SD card reader and recorder. It does both. It has uh, AM, FM and two shortwave bands. The shortwave bands cover from 5.5 megahertz to 20 megahertz. That's more than adequate for the international broadcast band. It has a three function equalizer right here. Three knobs that you can change the uh, frequency response on your playback. This is the buttons for the cassette for playing, recording, uh, rewind, fast rewind, so on. This is the. Hey, let me let me uh, stop this and take this out so I don't break it off. Okay, now see if I can zoom in any more. That's about it. Okay, so I'll go back through them again. Uh, these these are the three knobs for the equalizer, bass, mid, and treble. This is the buttons for the cassette control. This is the function control for the radio, the USB device, and the tape device. This is a band select here for FM, AM, shortwave 1, shortwave 2, and this is the volume control. Over here is the tuning knob. <coughs> no, that wasn't. <laughs> That was an audio distortion. That was my voice cracking. <clears throat> Excuse me. And then down here we have... <clears throat> oh, I'm so sorry that I'm, my voice is so messed up. We have a headphones jack and a power jack. Now, this can be powered at least three ways. You can use an AC adapter, which it doesn't come with. You can use... Turn this around here. You can use batteries and it uses uh, I think they're D size. Oh, if I get this open now. There we go. Yeah. It uses four D size batteries, so you get a lot of capacity by using D size. Let me close this back up. Okay. And you can use standard AC power, and they do provide the AC power plug. 
which is what I'm using right now. Uh, I think that's about it. Oh, down here um, is the controls for the USB or the SD card for playback, stop, pause, record, or delete. You can actually delete a file. Um, and you can record onto your USB or your SD card. And then the uh, next track forward and next track back. And uh, it has a microphone input right here for recording uh, through a microphone. And it has a microphone. That's to record to the SD device or USB SD device. And it has a microphone right here for recording onto the tape. So it plays and records on tape, USB drive, and SD. Lots of functions. Now, it has four speakers, so it's in stereo. It claims 500 watts. 500 watts. I don't know how that's measured, but anyway, it claims 500 watts. It does not have all these features, and it does not have an auxiliary input. And I just kicked the camera. Sorry about that. It does not have an auxiliary input. I, I don't understand that. That's the one thing that's missing. Okay. Now, look and feel. Oh, it also has a handle and uh, a telescopic antenna for shortwave and FM. The look and feel is pretty good except this is kind of painted on chrome here around the tweeters. Um, the plastic feels pretty good and it, the seams the seams are good. You know you don't see some gaps or anything like that. It's um, I have no batteries in it and like I say you can put four D cells, which is quite a bit of weight, probably double the weight, uh, but it's pretty hefty. Now, that being said, when you go to push these buttons down here, you actually have to hold the radio because it takes quite a bit of pressure to push, them, which is a good thing, but you have to hold the radio to push these buttons. Now, if I had the D cell batteries in there, maybe that would add enough weight so you wouldn't have to do that. Pardon me for taking a little break there and have some tea so I don't start choking. Um, it has uh, an LED power indicator or level indicator, I'm sorry, level indicator which is indicating the level of the audio, not like an S meter or anything like that. Okay, now the AM and FM bands work fine. That, you know, that's not a big deal to get that to work. You can buy a dollar store radio and it'll do a pretty good job of at least FM. A lot of the dollar store radios now don't have the AM band. The AM band is kind of disappearing on some of these cheaper radios. Oh, speaking of cheaper, as I mentioned in the beginning, I've been watching this for nine months, but it normally sells for at least $39.95 on Amazon. Well, I was looking through Amazon for a radio to buy to review on my show, and this was now they had one, used one, for $17.95. Now, this was a used one from Amazon. And what Amazon does is when they get a return, they check it out. And if everything's good and it's not scratched, so it looks like it's brand new, they will put it back in their warehouse and sell it as a used item. And typically, they're pretty heavily discounted. So that. $17.95 was less than half price. I was about to get that, but I read the reviews and there were several negative reviews. 
about some of the functionality and some things breaking in you know in less than a month. So I'm like, I don't know how thorough a job they do on returns and and somebody if if the if the person that was returning it didn't flag a particular problem, then they might not go back and do a test of the problems that the person might have had but didn't tell them. So I was a little leery of getting that used one, even though it's guaranteed and you can get your get a refund. I really, I, I really thought that this might be a radio that I wanted to keep. So I went, in, I went for the ones they had on sale for twenty-seven dollars. So that was from thirty-nine dollars to twenty-seven dollars, which was the price range I was looking for for this particular radio. I got it, got it. I jumped on it. And I got it. I think they're still on sale right now for thirty-seven dollars. You can check Amazon. I'll put one of these in my Amazon store. Oh, by the way, I am overwhelmed by the response to my viewers for using my Amazon store. This is this is how I was able to buy this radio from the commissions I got from my Amazon store for you people out there that bought through my Amazon store. It takes a couple of extra steps. Once you get to Amazon, which it takes you to Amazon, and then you're dealing with Amazon, guarantees, everything, shipping, everything is done through Amazon. So mine is just a storefront. But if you do that, if you go through my store, I get a small commission. I take that small commission and I buy things like this. So much for my ad on my store. <laughs> okay, moving on. Now, like I say, AM and FM work fine, no problem there. I'm at an advantage in that uh, I'm in an area where I've got a lot of strong AM and FM stations, so it's not, that's not difficult to receive. Now, let's go to the shortwave. The two shortwave bands, to say the least, it's difficult to tune. You can do it, but you have to be pretty meticulous. All you have to tune is this big knob here. That's all you have. There's no fine tuning. And as you probably know, if you've tuned in on the amateur, I mean on the shortwave bands, a lot of times the tuning can be pretty delicate. So don't expect this to tune in those weak stations. It won't. It will tune in the strong stations. And of course, with shortwave, conditions change so rapidly that when you get this radio, conditions could be poor for shortwave. And you go, this radio doesn't receive shortwave. I've tuned both bands and there's nothing there. Well, that can happen. Conditions are good. You can receive stations all over this radio. So keep that in mind. It's, I like, what I like about this, not so much for the shortwave, but for the multifunction. Now, for instance, if you're listening to shortwave and you receive something that, like, whoa, I haven't ever received that. I want to, you know, record that for posterity. You can use the cassette player or the USB to record off the radio. Now, let me say a little bit about that. Here are, well, that's a warranty, forget that, that's useless. Um, here are the instructions. Let me move the radio back a little bit. I know you can't read them, so bear with me. Uh, it, this is a hint right here. It's not even folded properly, so it's crooked. And this it's just two sheets, that's all you get. Um, this sheet is in some other language, so you throw that one away. Well, you throw one of these two away, which depending on which one language you can read. So you get one sheet of instructions. Front, well, the front is the picture and a list of the buttons, and a big major caution that this can cause cancer. No, I'm just kidding. Uh, and then it gets into how to use it. 
and um, on the back it tells you how to use these, this section here for the MP3 playing and recording. The wording is poor. I'll be nice. The wording is poor. You really have to read it about ten times. I I really struggled with trying to figure out how to record from the cassette to an MP3 stick. That took a while to figure out how to do. And I'm, what I'm going to do, I'm, I've forgotten already how to do it, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to sit down and I'm going to write my own set of instructions because I know tomorrow I'll forget how to do it. So I'm going to write my own instructions and that way I don't have to struggle through these again. So that's the instructions. And as I said, you can record from the cassette to MP3, from MP3 to cassette, from the radio to cassette or MP3, and I think I pretty well record. Oh, and you can record from the this microphone up here to cassette, and this microphone here to, to MP3. Lots of functions, and they seem to work. Really, they they work pretty good now. The fidelity is not fantastic. It's okay. It's okay. I think it's, I think I read somewhere where, let's see, does it say here? Somewhere I read that, no, it doesn't say here. I knew it wouldn't. Um, it records at 22K, up to 22K, which to me is fine, you know. My hearing, maybe I can hear 10K. So anyway, so I'm just going to show you real quickly. This is a uh, USB dongle, and it has music files from the YouTube free library. So I can play these without getting in trouble. So I plug this in, and I go to the USB function, and it starts playing. It's reading right now. And what's what's really unusual is that it remembers the last track, I'll call it track, file, probably a better name, it remembers the last file you played, and it picks up from there, even though you've unplugged it and plugged it back in. Pretty smart. So here's the... Uh, that's kind of mellow. You can use these buttons down here to go between tracks. Get this piece of junk out of the way. Oops, this kicked the camera. Oh, well. Okay, I selected the next one. Yeah, it's more like it. Okay, um, so you can play from a USB drive or an SD card either one. I haven't tried the SD card slot yet, but I will try it to make sure it's working. And although my although my camera's microphone is not going to do a very good job of picking up the music, but it's the, the music quality is very good. I wouldn't say excellent, but very good. These two bass speakers give you quite a bit of bass, not a lot. It's not a boom boom box, you know, one of those three foot by two foot boom boxes. So I was only about halfway up on the volume there at that maximum. And then you got the equalizer. Cut the bass out. Mid range, and then the music stops, and treble, <laughs> um, which I, from these, I don't want to say the word cheap, but lesser expensive devices, radios, players, whatever, that have these little equalizers, to me, 
they don't do much. Um, I always leave them at max setting, all three at max setting. Um, what they, where they might come in handy, which I haven't tried, is when you're tuning shortwave. That might help. I'm, I'm going to do a test on shortwave listing in another video because uh, this one's getting too long already and I babble too much. So, with that in mind, I think I'll uh, shut this video down. And uh, like I say, I got this on sale. This is a new one. This is not a used, re recycled one for $27. I think they're still on sale for $27. Normal price is $39. And this is the GFX. Let's see if it has a model number. Yeah, it doesn't have a model number on here. Oh, J-22U. J-22. And there's several models of this. And I haven't, for the life of me, and they all look alike except one of them have, has like an orange plate here. And I don't know, I can't figure what the difference was. But they're, and they're slightly different prices. I, I don't know what the difference is. So anyway, uh, that's the show for today. If you enjoyed the show, please give me a thumbs up. Again, thanks for everyone that's used my Amazon store. That's how I was able to purchase this radio for a review. Bye-bye. Oh. Getting in the mood there.